All right. Hey there, everybody. How are you doing? It's me, Chris Herman, here for another episode of On Deck, brought to you from right here at the Herman Agency in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yes, lovely Fort Lauderdale. Uh, here we go. What's today's topic? Today's topic is connected vehicles and your customer. This one goes out to my automotive family and uh, those of you in the business. I think this is uh, this is a topic worth paying attention to. You know. Um, we have a lot of focus in our industry right now about EVs, electric vehicles, right? I mean, it's like every manufacturer is going crazy, you know, to convert their fleet to EVs. And, you know, some of them are pushing for super aggressive timelines. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a different topic. And I'm going to talk about that on a different episode. But, you know, with so much focus on EVs, um, you know, you'd think that that's like the thing that's going to happen the fastest, but most of the data suggests that uh, customer adoption to EVs is going to take a lot longer than what the manufacturers and the government is really pushing for. But what will happen quicker is connected vehicles. And not an expert here, not an expert, just going to share some real basic com concepts here. Um, to initiate some dialogue about data and who's going to own your customer. If you're a, if you're a dealer, who, who's going to own your customer data? So the whole concept of, of the connected vehicle is really um, as vehicles have evolved with technology and as vehicles have more technology in them, there will be more connectivity from your vehicle to other devices more than just your mobile device. Vehicles will be connected to insurance grids. Vehicles will be connected to each other for safety purposes. Vehicles will be connected to the manufacturer. And that's the main thing that I want to talk about. You know, you've heard this term, the internet of things. Um, what does that mean? Your smart TV connected to the, you know, to the internet and gathering data your refrigerator uh, in many cases now has an internet connection your technology your things are all now being wired in and connected to a network for a number of purposes right for service things for technology uh, and also to record data we all know everything's being recorded it's all being recorded so your car ultimately is going to be another internet of things in the sense that the vehicle in and of itself is going to be transportation for you get to get around but it is going to be connected to a number of different networks that are gathering information about fuel consumption your speed uh, your driving style these are things that could be you know sent to insurance agencies connected to other cars to help eliminate uh, collisions and crashes um, connected to GPS networks for better navigation and ultimately connected to the manufacturer so that the manu automobile manufacturer is gathering all this information and data about you and your driving habits in your vehicle. So I was just at the Autovate conference. Um, my good friend and partner Cliff Banks, we put on the Autovate event every year in Austin, Texas, where the topic is the future of the automotive industry from the perspective of retailers, dealers, same thing, technology, the finance sector, and, and, and investments that are being made into the automotive community. But one of the topics that comes up every year is the connected car. You know, Cliff's a big believer that, you know, the connected vehicle technology is really going to be the thing that, that advances faster than the actual adoption of EVs. And so it, it begs the question of, if your car ultimately becomes another device that is collecting data, and that data is now being transferred back to the manufacturer, who is gonna own your customer's data if you are an automotive dealer? Think about this for a second, right? If the data on your customer that you're collecting now in the form of name, address, you know, email address, social security, all the stuff that you need to get from your customer in order to transact with your customer, okay? At some point in time, the vehicle in and of itself 
is going to be the data transmission vehicle and who's going to get that data are you going to get it or is the dealer or is the manufacturer going to get it you're probably both going to get it but who's going to own it and control it and this really for me you know in hearing this and thinking about this this you know this posed a question for me that i'm i'm putting out there again and i'm i'm not i'm i am not an expert on this okay i'm just sharing the information as it comes into my brain as i have time to percolate and think about it and i'm just going to put it out there because i'm constantly looking for dialogue here i'm hoping that those of you that watch and listen to this podcast are hearing this you're going to chime in you're going to comment you're going to direct message me we're going to have a conversation maybe you come here and we sit down across the table from each other and we talk about this topic um, or any of the topics, but this one in particular, because you know we're seeing massive consolidation in the retail automotive space right now. I mean, if you look at the acquisitions that Lithia alone made in 2021, it's enormous. These companies are flush with cash, right? Despite the fact that the microprocess or microchip you know problem has limited inventory, we all know in this industry that dealers are making record profits they're making money hand over fist and so the publics have large stockpiles of cash and what do they got to do with it they got to invest it where's the best place that they can invest it most likely in acquisitions of existing automotive platforms in the form of large groups around the country okay we worked with the suburban collection the suburban collection was acquired by lithia uh, lithia just acquired some stores here in fort lauderdale the uh, i believe it's pronounced the cavale group but is uh, audi coral springs you know and they're not the only ones you know asbury's made some big acquisitions everybody's making acquisitions and the reason i'm saying this is we're seeing this massive consolidation in our business of not only dealerships but technology companies getting gobbled up gobbled up so you're what's being created are these large dealer network platforms that are going to have a lot of power compared to some of these smaller independent single point stores that may not have the same leverage with the manufacturer that a publicly traded group has and why am i saying this because if we move in the next five years to a situation where vehicles that are being produced and created are the internet of things and those cars are excuse me uh, connected digitally back to the manufacturer where the manufacturer is able to ascertain all this data right who's going to have the power there over your customer if you're an individual single point dealer and ford owns the data to your customer and then maybe they're sharing it with you maybe they're not but who is going to be able to take control of that customer right like these are things that seriously need to be be thought about we've seen this in our industry you know the third party lead providers came in and found a way to place themselves in between your customer and your dealership right years ago okay auto trader was a magazine that you advertised in right now auto trader part of cox automotive is a digital platform that clearly stands in between you and your customer now i'm not saying they're not partners with dealers i'm not saying that but over the years, more layers have become in the way of the dealer and their connection to their customer, right? And so if we follow that down the trend, we see this consolidation and ultimately you've got vehicles that are transferring a significant amount of data about your customer back to the manufacturer, who has the upper hand there, right? So I'm saying this not this is not gloom and doom. This is just this is the way the world's going. It's technology, consolidation, and information. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's all about data. The car's not even going to be the important thing anymore. The phone, your iPhone, your Samsung Galaxy, whatever you have, that's not the that's not what's important. It's the delivery and send and receive mechanism for information for you and for the manufacturer that owns it or the platforms that operate on it. The car is ultimately going to basically be the same thing. It's just going to be like a phone on wheels, right? A way for you to interact, connect, and for data to be transmitted back and forth. But if your data is now as a customer is being, uh, you know, transmitted back to the manufacturer, then the manufacturer has a strong amount of leverage over the data of your customer if you're a dealer. So Dealers, particularly those of you that are in smaller groups or single points out there, if there was ever a time for you to really be focused 
on maximizing your relationship with your database, communicating to your database, communicating to your customer, man, start doing it now. Because if you don't get a strong hold of that conversation, you're gonna lose them. You're gonna lose them. Why? Couple reasons. Inventory levels are low, right? So your customer that may have been loyal to you because they liked your brand, you're an Audi dealership, they like Audi, they like you. Well, if you don't have cars, they're not gonna be necessarily as loyal to Audi and or you. you know, somebody might say, well, I mean, I love Audi, I love the brand. Uh, I think I'm gonna go, I, I, the BMW store has some cars. I, that's, that's what I gotta choose, right? So as people become less brand connected in the automotive space as a result of reduction in inventory, right? You're losing them that way. And then as the technology takes over, right, and becomes more connected, and now that customer's data is more closely aligned with the brand that they're currently in, where's your customer going? Who's owning the customer? Where are they gonna go? How are you gonna talk to them? Who's gonna be in charge of talking to them? You know, these are, I think these are big issues facing our industry right now. I don't hear anybody talking about it, not yet, so I'm talking about it, and again, you know, you might say, you don't know your ass from your elbow on some of this stuff. Or maybe you're right. I don't know. Leave, leave some comments. Tell me if you think I'm, you know, wrong or if I'm right. Whatever. Let's have a dialogue. That's what this is all about. This is not me sitting here with a platform to tell you what's right, what's wrong, what I know is right. No, I'm just sharing information as it comes into me, as my brain processes it, and as I think, okay, I've got a viable um, topic to talk about because I'm looking for people to respond. I'm looking for a dialogue from those of you out there. I'm looking for comments so that we can enter into conversation, right? I would love to have you sit here across from me. Anybody, manufacturers, dealers, marketers, looking to have conversations one-on-one right here uh, in the studio about these meaningful topics because our business is changing rapidly. Consolidation is moving quickly. Technology is moving way quickly, way quickly. Nicely said there, Chris. But at the end of the day, I think about, you know, I, I still think about like the old school dealer, you know, the, the family owned business that for years, you know, over generations was, be, was able to create um, a meaningful business for their family that generated wealth for the family that contributed to their local community, that employed people in the local community, that gave back to the community. Um, we're gonna see these you know, family-run dealerships and platforms, they're gonna be dissolving. You know, They're gonna get acquired. They're gonna get acquired because the large publics are gonna continue to wanna grow. Now, they're gonna have limitations there, but this consolidation's gonna consider, continue. The focus on data, who's the customer, who is the audience, who are we speaking to as marketers, who are we speaking to as manufacturers to gain oh so important market share. These things are gonna shift fast, and you know EVs are the big topic right now, but I agree with Cliff. Um, the connected car is really something that's gonna bring this happening, or bring this along much quicker. So. Uh, stay on top of this topic. If you have information, DM me. Let me know. Uh, if you like this content, if this content is meaningful, you subscribe to our channel, The Herman Agency. Ring the bell so you get a notification when new videos come out. And reach out to me. I want to talk to you about this. I want to learn more. I want to share information. And I want to share it with our community. So there we have it. Connected vehicles and your customer. Get your arms around your customer now. Do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, please. <laughs> that. Uh, a light ending to a serious topic. I hope you're all having a great day. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. The whole deal. Happy New Year. Enjoy, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much from me. <coughs> Excuse me. Chris Herman in another episode of On Deck. <laughs>